and welcome to Subjective Thoughts. And our book for today is Admeon Spring by Matthew Skelton. Now there is uh, magic, some injuries, attempted murder, um, mysteries, and uh, sneaking around in this one. So if you are in any way squeamish, you have been warned. Also, spoilers. And uh, this is by um, Delector Press. All right. There we go. We got Watson with us. He's uh, sleeping. All right, so uh, this was actually a reread for me. I already read the uh, Admion. I looked on Google and it says Admion is how you pronounce it. But if it's not, my apologies. Yes, yeah, so I read this already uh, some years ago when I was still in school. Now, I can't remember if I read the Hebrew translation. I'm certain there's a Hebrew translation. I remember that. Or if we had a copy in English. But anyway, I have read it, and I really loved it back then. And last year, I suddenly uh, thought about the, this book again. I remembered the name, and I looked it up, and I found it. I mean, I found that I didn't dream it. And I uh, found me a copy. I wanted one in the English, of course. Of the original language that it was written in. And I luckily found this. And uh, well, I started reading it in the end of last year, and <laughs> finally finished. But yes, it was uh, it was really fun to reread this again. I I just remembered liking it a lot, and I wanted to give it another shot. Uh, not another shot, but to reread it again and see what I think now. So, uh, <clears throat> oh, sorry. Um, uh, sorry. The Man, I, I wanted to say something, but that would, uh, escaped me. Yes, so I, I reread it, uh, finally. I didn't remember as much of the book as I thought I did, though. Because I remember things going a bit differently. Anyway, let's get to it. Uh, first, I will say, I always loved the cover of this book. The two uh, snakes, or dragon snakes, what you want to call them. The color of it, the red, the... See all this? Uh, there is a bit of illustration inside, but I'm not sure who did those. Not illustrations, but like the... Some some little pictures. I'm not sure if Mr. Skelton uh, has done them or someone else. I'll, I'll look later inside and I'll find it. If not, then not. Yeah, so... Uh, I won't go into the whole thing, but I will describe uh, what happens. Although it's still spoilers, because uh, I'm going to go in. And, and, and not fully, but yes. So, uh, Anime on Spring uh, goes between two... And the story goes between two characters. We have Anime on himself, who is a young boy. I think about 10, maybe. Maybe 11. Not older, definitely not older. And another, uh, so he's from the 14th century. And between another young boy called Blake, who's from the 2000s. Of, well, f from our century, the 21st century. So, uh, Admeon is an assistant at a press. Now, this has some uh, some a real historical events in it. What I mean is, this is around the time where a man in Germany, uh, right, I forgot to say, uh, add me on this from Germany, from Mainz. So he's, uh, he was working, well, of course, uh, add me on this fictional, but he was working for a man who really did exist called uh, Johann Gutenberg. Uh, he was the man who popularized the press, you know, pressing books. Now, a uh, uh, pressing technique already existed before this. I think the Chinese, uh, I learned this in class, the Chinese um, 
uh, started, but they pressed like a whole page. And now what Mr. Gutenberg did was he made the letters individual, and thus you could print out a whole page or just quickly, you know, make the page you need. You don't have to make the entire page. You can can make whole sentences by yourself. Now, of course, that still took time, but uh, it was at least for that uh, that period, it was very fast. Wanted to revolutionize the press because before they would have uh, men would sit and they would uh, copy. They would copy uh, the Bible mainly and other books by hand, which would take a very long time. So that is what Admignon does. Now Blake is a young boy who um, was at Oxford with his mother because he's writing a paper about a name, uh, a man named Faust, and he's there with her and his little sister. Uh, his his family's having some trouble. His uh, parents are uh, fighting. His dad's back in America. They're just there to uh, to work. Sorry about that. And you know, he's, he's a young kid. He's bored, you know. He has to tag along with his mom. And his mom, of course, is working, so she's just throwing them off at any person who will babysit them. Now, reading this now as an adult, the mom's not really... Uh, it's a bit annoying. I mean, I get it, she has to work, but I just don't get logistically why she brought the kids with her. Should have just left them home with the dad. I mean, she just throws them to the librarian, here, babysit them, please, while I work for a few hours. I mean, they're kids, you know, they got nothing to do. No TV, uh, computer, or whatever. And it makes sense they would be bored. Oh yeah. So the story goes between uh, between the two boys, and they're both uh, well not after both of them, Admignon originally, are uh, are protecting a book. Uh, a book. Well, the, there's the book uh, Admignon Spring, and then there's the last book, which is what uh, everyone's uh, everyone is after in our story. It is the book that just, it contains all the knowledge in the world. Whoever possesses it will have uh, infinite knowledge and power and riches and whatnot. So we go between the, the past and the present. In the past, Admignon is, uh, has uh, discovered something called the uh, dragon skin, which is what the last book is made out of. Now, it was, uh, it was discovered by a man who went on a trip with his granddaughter. And she got uh, hurt and bled on a tree. Now, that tree was a dragon. Now, the man got uh, decided to take down the tree. And then he realized what he actually killed. But he kept the paper, which Faust, uh, also actually, I think, a real historical character, uh, stole stole from him and he brought it all the way to Minz to uh, where he is uh, he was uh, one of uh, Johann Gutenberg's uh, um, uh, what was it called uh, investors he's one of the investors so that's how he comes to, to Johann and that is where uh, Admion uh, sees the dragon skin now, uh, Faust wants to use Admignon because they need a child's blood to awaken the dragon skin. So he's, uh, he schemed it in a way where Admignon would discover the dragon skin. And then Admignon has to uh, think of a way to get it away from him. He takes a bit of the skin uh, with him and it uh, combines with his toolkit. And that's what creates Admignon Spring, the little book. Now, uh, him together with a, uh, a man, a young man named Peter, who is Faust's assistant. Well, he's more his assistant because he wants to marry his daughter, Christina. So together they have to think of a plan to get uh, Admion and the dragon skin away from Faust. 
And unfortunately, the only way to do that is to take... Um, is to have uh, Admi on escape. But they don't know where. Where to take it where Faust won't find him. And they happen along the story to meet a drunk man who came from Oxford. And he tells them about Oxford. And Peter's like, this is where you need to go. Faust will not find you there. Oh yeah, as she mentions, uh, Admion is mute. He was born mute. So, uh, with a heavy heart, they start planning, because uh, Admion doesn't want to leave the only home he's ever known. But he doesn't have a choice. To keep the dragon skin safe from Faust, he has to. So... He uh, he and Peter begin uh, begin thinking of a plan. Back in the present, um, Blake discovers Admignon Spring in the library. You know, he opens it. He opens the book, and it's blank. And he's wondering why would someone keep a blank book? But then he sees letters starting to appear. Admignon Spring chose him, and so he's the only one that can read the lines inside. And uh, even his, uh, his little sister can, can't. Um, I'm going to guess his little sister is maybe seven. Because she can read. She has a collection of books of her own. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to guess. I just wonder why I never even mentioned the ages of the children. At least a little bit. But yeah, never mind. So he leaves the book there, but keeps thinking about it. And that evening, he wants to go back and take it again. But as he sneaks into the library, uh, he finds that it's gone. And then uh, when he runs out of the library, after he sees someone uh, destroyed some books, he runs back to where his mother is. Of course, of course she's very uh, angry. <laughs> So he's, uh, you know, he's thinking about the book, where is it? And uh, Doc, his sister, also gets involved, and they both start searching for it. And then he discovers that Doc actually took it that day. She really wanted to uh, see what it was about, but no matter what she's done to it, she couldn't see the words like Blake could. Because again, uh, he was chosen by Admin on Spring. So he and Duck together are trying to solve the, well, trying to solve the mystery. Where is the, where's the last book? Now along the way they meet, uh, they meet more, uh, we meet people that also know about Admin on Spring and want the last book. There's this liberous, liberous society at, uh, at Oxford. Well, 40 years ago, one of them named George actually discovered the Admignon Spring. The book has chosen him, but then there was a betrayal because two other members, one named Joylin, who we meet, and another named uh, Diana, they also wanted the book. Now, they tried to get it, but the book rejected them, and then George disappeared and ran away so they wouldn't get the book. So, they, uh, they keep searching. Back in the past, Peter uh, and Christina managed to help Admignon escape uh, using some kind of festival. Uh, the, 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 the Day of the Dead something. And he escapes with the, with the dragon skin. In the present, Blake and uh, Doc get closer to finding, uh, to finding the last book. They have spoken to George, who is uh, homeless now. The, this book leaves everyone with some damage, basically. I mean, searching for it. And he, uh, he gives them uh, more pages of the last book that, they, uh, that were ripped from Admignon. Uh, from Admignon Spring, I mean. Along the way, the book gives them more riddles, and they end up in another library, and while their mother goes up to work, they go down into the, you know, the levels below, well, they sneak in, they're not allowed in there, to find the last book. 
A blank like uh, George before him is compelled, of course. Admignon is compelling him forward to find the last book. What needs to happen is they need to be combined. The Admignon spring in the last book. And so the further down they go, they find the last book. Blake goes down into a catcomb, tells Duck to wait for him. The books combine, but the person in the shadow who's been after it, Diana, she's the person in the shadow, uh, kidnaps Duck. So Admignon, Admignon. So Blake has uh, no choice, he has to go. She leaves him a message where to wait for her. He doesn't know it's her yet. And she... And then when he finds out, he's, he's quite shocked. Now she's married to Sir Giles, who's not the nicest uh, character, shall we say. He's a book collector. He actually took a book from Blake that he wanted to buy. It was a book uh, that was written about... Uh, kind of written about Faust. On how to read uh, the last book for people who are unworthy. So he, um, <clears throat> sorry. So he, she tells her, "I'll only give you the last book if you show me where my sister is." So she started dragging him uh, through the library, up to the, you know, to the up his, uh, to the towers. She locked Duck up in a room. And then she drags him to her office. She's an archivist. And uh, she takes the book away from him. And now the book isn't fully complete. There's a little piece missing of it that someone tore off. It was Diana who tore it off 40 years ago. She has the little piece of paper and a butterfly clasp uh, clip on her clothes. Sorry. <laughs> So she, Blake tells her, I can't read it, uh, the book is not complete. So she takes the little piece of paper and it combines with the book. And now Blake doesn't know what to do until he finally realizes one of the riddles. It needs blood, his blood will seal the book. So he pricks his finger on the, on the butterfly clasp, I, clasp, I think. A, a pin, on the butterfly pin. And bleeds on the book. And it seals the book. Diana can't read it. And then Blake starts running. He wants to try to get help. He runs to the roof. He hopes to maybe um, go down the fire escape. And while he and when he exits, he turns on the alarm. I think it's probably a fire alarm or something. So he struggles with Diana on the roof. She tells him to open the book. He refuses. And she says, well, if I can't have it, I won't let you have it. And she tries to kill him. That got really dark, didn't it? Now, it, well, she tries. She doesn't succeed. Because in the struggle, while she's choking the poor lad, uh, Blake manages to knock, uh, knock at her. And the book falls to the ground. Blake loses consciousness. And then we go back to Admignon. He has reached... Um, he has reached Oxford, but, you know, after his hard travels, he's uh, fallen ill. Luckily, he's taken by uh, one of the, the monks there. He brings him to their, uh, um, to their, not, not church, uh, abbey? Yeah, the abbey, or the abbot. Now, they nurse him back to health. And there, uh, there's another uh, librarian who covets uh, the book, the dragon skin, I should say. So Admignon gets better. Um, this monk uh, takes care of him. And Admignon's going to start his new life there. And the abbot's with everyone. But he's still uh, concerned what to do about the dragon skin. He still doesn't know where to give it to. And then I give it to where to hide it. Because that was his mission. But he sees that there will always be someone that will covet the dragon skin. And he goes, and then one day he goes somewhere with the, with the monk. Uh, Theodore, Theodore was his name. And he finds the, like, the right place to hide the, the pages of the dragon skin. 
Now, as he exits the place he hid it in, he realizes that he hadn't put in his toolkit as well. <coughs> Sorry. Which is also part of the dragon skin. But he decides that he won't part with it yet, because it's been with him for months. Like, in his months of travel, it absorbed some of him. So he decides that he'll keep it for now. And has basically our book admin on. And then that's it. Uh, we go back to the future. Blake is in the hospital. Because after the struggle with Diana, because she uh, knocked him and he hit his head on, uh, on some bricks. Uh, his father flew all the way to them because he didn't hear from them. And also, Doc told him that this old fling of his mom uh, was around. <laughs> Sneaky girl. So his parents, and so they're all uh, with him in the hospital. And then Joylin uh, comes to a visit. Uh, Diane has been arrested. Jo uh, Joylin comes in now. Uh, Diana tells him that Joylin uh, lied to him. Because <clears throat> he also wanted the book. And maybe not for the same purposes that um, Diana did, but he still wanted it for reasons the book rejected him for. Right, Watson? I'm sleeping. And because those who the book rejected, they have uh, their their fingertips are black. That's where the book bit them. Forever marking them rejected by it. Joylin tells him, uh, <coughs> you know, tells him that why he didn't want to tell him. And Blake still doesn't understand why the book chose him. And for some reason, Joylin tells him to ask his, uh, ask his father. Well, then the next day, um, uh, uh, they're, they're all back in the library waiting for their mom, and then they go back home. Or they're not home, but where they, they're currently staying at. Um, Blake still wonders what happened to Admin on Spring, but then uh, George actually brings him the book, uh, wrapped up in Duck's uh, raincoat. So Admin Young springs back with him again. Uh, his parents are talking, which he's happy about. So, uh, among the riddles, there was uh, one riddle that he finally understood. It was about his parents. Because his dad's name is Christopher Winters. Christopher Winters. And his mom's maiden name is uh, Juliet Summers. So when the seasons combined... Does that make him a... Uh... Well, anyway. He's happy uh, he has admin on spring again, and the seal opens. The, the little drop of blood that he... The seal that crumbles, and he and he has admin on spring again. Then he runs up to his room to read it. So that was just some of it. Uh, it now I go into the whole thing. This is probably a bit incoherent in some places, too. But yeah, that's the uh, that's the adventure of uh, Admin Hunt Spring. Every reading this again, uh, you can see why I liked it so much, <laughs> and I still do. Although the, nowadays, like I said, I find the mom a bit annoying. But other than that, I, I still enjoyed it a lot. Um, I do wonder uh, the, this would. Um, not only the series, but I wonder if this had a continuation, what would it be? And it's kind of like a story that will never really end, right? There will always be someone chosen and some people that will cover the book. There's no real way to hide it unless you completely destroy it, I suppose. And it's, it's interesting, isn't it? What, what would you do? Or what would Blake do? I will say, though, I would have loved that there had been, like, a short continuation where, uh, I don't know, maybe we see an older Blake, like, much older, maybe in his, I don't know, his 20s, maybe. Or maybe even much older, maybe an old man already, wondering what to do with the book, who to give it to. Although, granted, uh, Admin on Spring himself is the only one who seems to choose who to give the book to. As he kind of gives it to someone who's not really interested in the power at all, but will protect the book. 
Because you have to wonder, what, what was Blake's real motivation here? Was it Advignon who kept pushing him on forward after... Nah, of course, the boy himself is long dead, but his uh, essence, his spirit is uh, in that little book. Pushing him on. And Blake never... Would Blake have continued without that? Interesting, isn't it? That's so interesting. If, if we had a continuation and Blake was grown up, would he have uh, become what the book would reject? Ah, there's uh, some questions we'll never get an answer to because this is the. I think this might be the only book um, Mr. Skelton wrote. And uh, he, he kind of wrote it like that because he also lived between going to America and the, and the UK. Uh, there's a bit of, in the back of the book about him. But yeah, overall, I, I really like this uh, fantasy story. Yeah, it's nice. Um, I guess... Uh, I guess it's, it's a nice like fantasy story if you don't want something too crazy. I mean, in terms of... Um, in terms of magical worlds, you know, there's nothing that outrageous here. Um, no uh, dwarves, other worlds and shit. You just have, well, the, the real world in a way. And then this book that uh, leads you after another one. All right, uh, let me show you what I meant by, uh, not, again, not, not illustrations, but um, let's see if I can find it. Second. Hmm. It's gotten hotter now. I mean, things like this. You see, and uh, this is supposed to be admin, as you see the little character. I don't know who made these, if it was uh, Mr. Skelton or someone else. Let me see. Uh, Maybe I'll say it here, or maybe not. Um, I don't, don't know. Let's see. That's oh, a hardcover edition, nice. But yeah, it doesn't it doesn't say so. So maybe um, let me see, like this illustration. Maybe Mr. Skelton has done these then. Uh, I, I suppose it's not really, you know, like a book fully illustrated, granted, but still. See? It's got such little uh, illustrations, like here. Uh, yeah, I guess, uh... No, I mean, I, I, I assume they would credit, right? There was an artist... Uh, like you see, means. No, oh, I'll suppose it. Uh, oh, there's the uh, there's the back. Oh. oh yeah, let me show you the the snakes cup closer. It's gonna be a bit uh, glary because I wrapped the bulk to keep it safer. Oh, yeah, you see, I really again, I love these colors. And I always like the, the the snakes. So yeah, that's uh, admin or ad admi on spring for you. And I think it's a really nice uh again, a really nice fantasy book if you don't want something too crazy. I enjoyed the reread and uh, I think uh, every few years I'll reread it again. I think also something nice to read to your child as well. I'll read it to mine. But yeah, a nice good fantasy story. Also nice and self-contained, so you don't have uh, you don't have to chase uh, other books in the series, which is always a nice thing. And nothing wrong with a series, of course. But uh, yeah, sometimes you just want to read a bit of fantasy in a one and done, and not have to start reading a whole five six. Uh, book series. 
Uh, yeah. That's a good one. If you like fantasy, I recommend it. I think you might uh, enjoy it. I will say that I wish the ending had a bit more to it. Because we just get that uh, throw-off sentence by Duck that Diana's been arrested, but that's about it. Would have been interesting to see uh, Sir Giles' reaction to his wife being arrested. I mean, I'll see the commotion. But other than that, I got no complaints. I enjoyed this, and I'm glad I found this book again. Alright, folks, so that is it. Uh, let me know, have you read uh, Edmund Young Spring? Did you like it? Did you not like it? What did you think about it? And, well, that is it. Now remember, collect what you're passionate about and share it on YouTube. Bye! <laughs>